Hi, nature's creepy. Let's talk about it. Raising kids is incredibly difficult. It's hard work feeding a child, protecting a child, and sheltering a child. So what if you just didn't have to do that? What if you could just drop your child off with some unsuspecting nanny and then fly off into the sunset? Well, that's kind of what parasitoid insects do. Like their name suggests, these insects are somewhat parasitic. This is often seen in the larval stages of these insects, as the young tend to be parasitic in nature while the mature adults are not. Several species of wasps are pretty well known for this strategy, and the parasitoid insect I happen to have in mind today is the jewel wasp. The jewel wasp is native to Africa, Asia, and some Pacific islands. It gets its name from the emerald green hue on its body. To us, this may be a very beautiful color, but to a cockroach, it's the color of death. This is because the female jewel wasp actively hunts out cockroaches to zombify them and then use them to feed her larvae. Now, just because the cockroach is the target of the jewel wasp doesn't mean it's completely helpless. In fact, the jewel wasp may be at a disadvantage at the initial encounter. The jewel wasp is considerably smaller than her prey of choice, and the cockroach will go into a stilt stand once it realizes it's a target. This is where the cockroach will raise its body further off the ground than normal. This can maximize the size advantage for the cockroach, as well as put it in the perfect position to kick the wasp. To us, a kick from a cockroach wouldn't be much, but for the jewel wasp, it is a strong blow that can knock her back several centimeters from her prey. In addition to this, a cockroach is still capable of biting and potentially killing a jewel wasp. But despite this, the jewel wasp can still level the playing field if she can land her first sting. The first sting is delivered to the thorax of the cockroach, and the venom from the sting will effectively paralyze the front legs of the victim. The venom of the jewel wasp contains neurotoxins which target the cockroach's neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are essential for passing information through your neurons all the way into your brain. Different neurotransmitters pass to different information, but if just one of them is inhibited, it can have devastating effects. And the jewel wasp demonstrates this remarkably well with her second sting. With the front legs of the cockroach paralyzed, she is now able to deliver a very accurate sting to the cockroach's brain. The second sting will unleash more venom straight into the central nervous system of the cockroach, but the neurotoxins in this venom work a little bit differently. These neurotoxins will not paralyze the cockroach, but rather inhibit its ability to engage in spontaneous movements, such as running away when it's scared. The first sting that paralyzed the cockroach's front legs will wear off relatively quickly, but because of that second sting, the cockroach will not run away from the jewel wasp. In fact, the jewel wasp can leave her prey completely unattended for up to 30 minutes while she searches for a burrow, because the only thing the cockroach is going to do in that time frame is compulsively groom itself. Once she has found a suitable burrow, and her prey has stopped grooming itself, she's able to take the time to recover the energy she lost in the struggle. And she does this by gnawing off the antenna of her victim and drinking its blood. After that, she will take the stubs of her victim's antenna and use them to guide the cockroach to her ideal burrow. Once they've arrived at her ideal burrow, she will lay a single egg on the cockroach's body before entombing both the egg and the cockroach into the burrow. This is done more so to protect her egg rather than keep the cockroach in place as the venom from the second sting will last long enough for the egg to hatch. Once the egg hatches, the jewel wasp larva will eat its way into the cockroach's body and begin consuming the organs of the victim while it is still alive. Once the cockroach inevitably dies because its organs have been consumed, it will use the hollowed out corpse as a cocoon and it'll stay there until it emerges as a full adult and can continue on with the parasitoid life cycle of the jewel wasp. While this whole process seems extremely gruesome to us, 
It's important to note that the jewel wasp is not an evil creature. They are simply doing what they need to in order to survive. And in doing so, they actually do us a favor by controlling the local cockroach populations. Every living creature on the planet plays a key role somewhere in nature. It's just that some of them come up with really unsettling ways of fulfilling their role. But that's what keeps life interesting. <laughs>